Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 85. Day Day 3085, 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 85. We are on page number 200, 293. At the very bottom of page 293, you will see figure number 7. Figure number 7, the graph that you see there, figure number 7, is what we are dealing with here. Except in the book, they do not give us the road data, they just give us the graph. We're going to build the, road, we're going to build the graph, you and I together, from the data, from the road data, which I'm going to give you in a second. So here we have example 4.1.13. We have enrollment in college A for the nine years that are given. And the enrollment figures are as follows. In 2001, so this is the year here. Here is the number of students. In 2001, we were told that we had 1,200 people in the college. Then we had 1,600 the following year. In 2003, it went up to 2,000 students. Then we had, well, it stayed at 2,000 from 2003 to 2004, it stayed at 2000, then it dropped for some reason, then it went up to 2400, then 2800, and 3000, and in 2009, the very last year, it had a huge jump from 3000 to 4000. The graph that it will produce <coughs> is, a sort of, is the sort of graph <coughs> excuse me, that will be given to us in the exam, without the data. The graph will be presented to us and they will ask us two or three questions based on the graph and which is exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to make up two, two or three of our own questions that are not, they're not in the book. We're going to make up just a couple of questions and answer them and just get some practice. Do you understand? Let's get going, shall we? Let's get going. So we see the figure go all the way up to 4,000. It starts with 1,200. So let's just say 1,000. So let's build it. Let's build it. We're going to from 1,000 to 4,000. Let's put 1,000 from here, here, and 2, 3, and 4. I think that should do it. That should do it. 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000. And let's go in the increment of 5, in the increment of 200, that is. One-fifth of a 1,000 is what I meant. So here we go. 1, 2, Three, four, and five. There you go. So 1200, 1400, 1600. You get the idea. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. There we go. We are, we are ready. And here are the years. This is the time on the x axis expressed in terms of years. And the years are all the way from 2001, which we're going to put here, 2001, all the way to 2009. So let's, let's do it here. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Voila. 2009, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. We're almost ready. Let's get going. So the first year we had 1200. So here we go. 2001, we started out with 1200 right here. The following year, I don't need this anymore. At least I don't think so. And 2002, the following year, it went up 1600. So 1200, 1400, 1600. The following year, we have to do a decent job. Next, it went up to, so that was 1600, then it went up to 2000. The next year, voila. Then it stayed at 2000. Then it dropped to 1800. The next year it went up to 2400, 2400, 2200, 2400. The following year it went up to 2800, voila. 
then 3000 even, 3000 even, the penultimate year, the second to the last year, the penultimate year. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, because vocabulary is a very, bad, very big part of the exam of the GRE, there are some videos you will find on my channel, 100 of them, uh, simply labeled as voc vocabulary words for GRE, GRE vocabulary words. Just search for GRE vocabulary words day one, and the series starts obviously with day one, and there are 100 videos as I said. Just type in any, any day that you're looking for, GRE vocabulary words day 68. We, ju we just use the word... Penultimate, P-E-N-U. It's not. It's. It is. It is not to be pronounced. It is not to be pronounced. P-E-N. Pen ultimate. It's not that. It's penultimate, which is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. I do not have the the list of the words with me right now. I cannot tell you which day we covered it, which way we which day we learned it, but it's there. Perhaps next video I'll tell you. So we just did the penultimate year, the second to the last year, and let's do the very last year, which is four thousand. I, I remember from two thousand nine. Hola. Let's put this guy together and see what, see what it looks like. Hopefully it will look like what we see in the book. Not quite, because I did take some uh, liberties in terms of data. Because as you can see in the book, they do not stay at 2000 exactly, it drops a little bit in the book. If you look closely, uh, for, for the sake of simplicity, I may just made them 2000 in both years. So, there is our graph. If you look at that graph on page number 293, figure 7, that's what this is. Let's answer a couple of questions, shall we? Let's answer a couple of questions. We need the room. We need the room, so we need to erase all of this thing. Otherwise, we can't do the questions. So, here's the first problem. In which year did the college had greatest increase in enrollment? In which year? In which year did the college have rather have or has? Which year did the college have? Let's just keep it simple, past tense. In which year did past tense had the greatest increase in enrollment. Very simple, very straightforward answer. We don't have to do anything at all. All we have to do is look at the picture and find the segment with the steepest slope because now, even though I, I put it as in which year, of course, they will phrase it properly, because from this year to that year. And we look at the segment. Segment with the steepest slope, but we already know when we're putting the data together, because we start out with raw data, but in the, in the exam, we will not have the data, we'll just have the graph. So which segment do we see there with the steepest slope? Steepest slope we see right here. That's, that's where the slope is the steepest. That's when they had the largest increase, as we know from our data, but we have to pretend that we didn't have it. But as we, as we know from there, it went from 3,000 to 4,000. So that's it is. The answer to this question is simply, in the exam, it is going to say from 2008 to 2009. Let's do the next question, shall we? Part B. In which year did the college, did the college have, it should not had, and did the college have the, again, the greatest, it should say greatest, and not the increase, but the drop. Even though they may have phrased like this, but as you can see, there's only one year when they had the drop. So now the answer is going to change. There's only one year, so now we're looking for a segment with a negative slope, because it's going to drop from one year to the next. And the only segment that we see with a negative slope is right here, from this year to this year, whatever these years happen to be, from 5 to 6, 2005 to 2006 is when they had the greatest 
decrease. As a matter of fact, that was the only year when they had the decrease. Let's do one more. The last one we're going to do is a little tricky. last one we're going to do is a little tricky, so pay attention. It's tricky, and I'll tell you where we did the similar question. The problem that we are about to do, I would like you to compare compare this problem that we are about to do with problem number 3 on page 173 that we did on day 3022. 3022. And I hope that you are watching these videos in the proper sequence because that's what I assume. So if you go to just type in GRE Math Day 3022. I hope that you already watched it, as I said already. But then that day, we did an example, example and a problem, problem number three on page 173. And what we're about to do is very similar to it. So here's the question. The question is, what is the, this is part C. What is the average change what is the average change in enrollment per year from 2001 to 2009? What is the average change? How much did the enrollment change on average per year for this the, for this period that, we, that, it, that is given to us from 2001 to 2009. As we know, if we want to find the average of anything, we have to have, to have the sum and we divide by the number of items that we have here. So here, the average change that we're looking for, average change per year that we're looking for, is going to be sum of all the changes, sum of all the changes, divided by the number of, number of changes. Uh, divided by the number of changes. And we have to pay attention here. So if we go from year 2001 to 2009, how many changes are we going to encounter? The common mistake is people in a hurry, they would say just nine. There are nine changes. No. For example, if you go from, the, uh, from 2001 to 2002 to 2003, if you have three years, you're going to encounter only two changes. The first change will be from 2001 to 2002. The second change will be 2002 to 2003. Even though there are three years, in the, in the period of three years, from 2001 to 2002 to 2003, there are going to be two changes. First change will be the change in enrollment from 2001 to 2002. That's the first change. The second change is going to be the change in enrollment from 2002 to 2003. Only two changes. Here we have a period of, eight, uh, period of nine years, from 2001 to 2009 but we have eight changes. So the bottom is going to be eight. Number of changes is eight. Number of change, of course, is going to be eight here. The question is, how do we find the sum of all the changes? How do we find the sum of all the changes? So we take an enrollment in 2002 and subtract the two so enrollment in 2001. That's going to be the first change. Then we take the enrollment in 2003 and subtract from it the enrollment in 2002. That's the second change. There is no change. The third change is going to be zero because it stays the same. The fourth change, we take the enrollment in 2005 and take away from it 2004, and we see that there is a drop, and so on and so forth, and we'll have a total of eight changes. And we add them up, and we'll get our total change. The question is, is that what we really want to do? Because that sounds very time-consuming, very labor laborious, and boring as hell. It will bore the pants off you, and we certainly do not want to do that. Do you understand? So what do we do then? Let's take a look at it. And that's what, what we are about to do here. As I said already, I'm repeating myself. It's what we did that day. 3022 in problem number 3 on page 173, we did the exact same thing. Let's take a look at it. So what we're going to do is, instead of having a period of 9 years, we're just going to keep it simple. And we're just going to have 4 years. Let's just have 4 years, just to understand the concept. 2001, 2002, 2003 and 2004 and let's just pretend that there are only four years so the first change that we want to find the very first thing we're going to find is the enrollment that we had enrollment that we had in 2002 minus the enrollment that we had in 2001 that's the first change 
Second change we're going to have is the enrollment that we have in 2000, the en enrollment that we had in 2003, minus the enrollment that we had in 2002. That's the second change. The third change we're going to have is the enrollment that we had in 2004, minus the enrollment that we had in 2003. And those are the three changes. And we need to add them up. And we need to add up those three changes. Let's add them up, see what, we, what happens. Let's add them up and see what happens. So instead of putting them like this, so here's the total change, total change. Instead of putting them like this, let's put them so this is easier to see, 2002 minus 2001. Well, let's start with the parenthesis. That's the first change. Plus, let's, let's do the parenthesis, 2003 minus 2002 plus 2004 minus 2003. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, shall we? When you open the parentheses, do you notice anything? What do you notice? As soon as we open the parentheses, what we notice is that we have we have a neck, we have a this is wrong. This should have said 2003 minus 2002. Because it can ruin our story. It can really ruin the hell out out of our story. And what an anticlimax that would have been. What we notice is that here we have enrollment in 2002 with a negative sign. And here we have enrollment in 2002 with a positive sign in front of it. They're going to kill each other. Similarly, here we have enrollment in 2003. And here we have enrollment in 2000 with a negative sign. And here we have 2003 enrollment with a positive sign. They are going to kill each other. What we're left with is the last year enrollment in 2004 minus minus the enrollment in 2001, the first year. In other words, in other words, total change is simply what we find out here is that the total change, total change is simply the final figure, final figure, which in this case was 2004 minus minus the initial figure. I would have liked to continue writing it this way, but there is no room. The initial figure in this case being 2001. And that's how we find the total change. We do not actually physically have to add up all the changes. Because in order for us to do it, go that method, we'll have to go, so we'll go around subtracting the next year's figure to, from the present year, 2002 minus 2001, 2003 minus 2002, 2004 minus 2003. So we'll sit there forever. What if we had 20 years? You don't want to do the bloody thing. So simply, the total change simply means, well, what did you start out with? What did you start out with? And, and what did you end up with? That's our total change right there. That is a total change. The, the rest, what happens in between is irrelevant. So let's do that on the top here. Do you understand? Let's do that on the top. So now we understand that the average change, average change, average change is simply the final figure minus the initial figure initial figure, that's our, that's our total change on the top, total change, divided by the number of changes. The final figure in this case is 4,000. Our initial figure was, this is 1,000, this must be 1,200. And how many changes did we have? Well, we are going from 2001 to 2009, we had 8 changes, remember that, not 9. Eight changes. There you go. That's what we have to figure out. So we have to erase all of this thing and figure it out. 4,000 minus 1,000 would have been 3,000. So 4,000 minus 1,200 is going to be, instead of 3,000, it's going to be 2,800. 2,800 divided by 8. 2,800 divided by 8. Twenty eight hundred divided by eight. What can we do? 
Let's divide by two, so we get a four here, and we get a we get a fourteen here. Let's do one more round. We get a two, and we get a seven, and then two with a fifty. We're going to get two with a hundred. We're going to get fifty. Seven times fifty. Seven times fifty. Seven times fifty. Seven times hundred would have been seven hundred. So it's three fifty. The average change is three fifty. In other words, on average. On average, the enrollment went up by 350, uh, 350 uh, students rather from one year to next for the given period. For the given period, how do we verify it? How do we verify that the answer is correct? But remember, there are there are eight changes, and what we are claiming is that the enrollment on average went up by 350 students per year, and we have eight changes, eight times it changed from whatever the figure was previous year. We are claiming that on average it increased by 350. Eight times from 2001 to 2009, eight times that happened, and that's what we are claiming it happened. So if we take 350, what we are claiming here, 350, what we are claiming here, 350 multiplied by eight, that will be the total change. You understand? Eight times zero is zero. Eight five is a forty. Zero carry four. Three eight, three is a twenty-four, and four is twenty-eight. There you go, that is your total change that we, that we were claiming. And what did we start out with? We started out with 1200. So that's our initial figure. We started out with 1200. So if that's the total change, if this is the total change, and that's the initial figure, then total change plus the initial figure must give us the final figure. exactly what we see there. It all adds up. It all adds up by Jove. Do you understand? That was it. What do we have for the next topic? That is the line graph. It's a very simple concept. You just have to pay attention uh, to details, small details. Read the graph properly and you'll be fine. The next thing we have is the measures of central tendency. We'll deal with that tomorrow. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? I know.